Hello there, my fellow friendly mech warriors, and welcome to another weekly dose on the battle mechs of Battletech. Today we're gonna be covering a light battle mech named after a famous Greek deity, in fact. One that is famous for his speed above pretty much all else. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Hermes light battle mech. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A few stats on this guy include... It is a light mech, massing only 30 tons, with a top speed of 151 km an hour, and a rounded price of 2.7 million C-bills. The Hermes was first commissioned in 2632 by Iran Battle Mechs Unlimited for the Star League Defense Force. They were built in record time too, allowing it to be deployed immediately as a heavy scout battle mech. Unfortunately, with the rushed nature of their deployment, it came as little surprise to the SLDF when, air tags, bugs began appearing in the Hermes, and the mech gained a reputation for having problematic electronics. Those problems would eventually be resolved through time-consuming field repairs carried out by SLDF technicians. As for the intended mission of the Hermes, the mech was initially designed to be as fast as any mech that existed at the time, trading a great deal of firepower and armor for its great speed. While this did make the Hermes almost untouchable at sustained pace, the mech warriors that piloted them usually had some doubts about taking such an underarmed scout mech into battle. This, in turn, made the Hermes quite unpopular in the beginning. It would serve for 19 years on the front lines before it was reassigned to second line units. Eventually it was decommissioned and mothballed by the SLDF. The onset of the succession wars would bring the Hermes out of retirement, however, and this time in service to the successor states, as company and battalion level scouts. As the wars dragged on, much of the technology behind the Hermes became lost, and repairs increasingly relied on heavier and less advanced components. When IBMU decided in 2798 to reopen the Hermes production line, it was only to build a brand new design, the Hermes II instead offering only refit and repairs for the decreasing numbers of the original. By the end of the succession wars, most of the Hermes that were still operational were held together by little more than scavenge pods and sheer determination. Only the Comguards maintained original model Hermes, in pristine condition no less, because of their secret stockpile of Star League era battle mechs. When the Helm Memory Core was recovered and the lost knowledge it contained distributed, IBMU decided in 3043 to use the Hermes as a test demonstrator for refitting other outdated designs with new technology. They did succeed in 3047 with the debut of the HRE-3S, which added increased electronic surveillance capability and sold these models to the Free Worlds League military. After the clan invasion, the company was given permission to sell the mechs to the Federated Commonwealth and the Draconis Combine, although so-called red tape prevented any actual sales from taking place, guaranteeing the Hermes exclusive use for the Free Worlds League for another decade. New variants of the Hermes would continue to be built for several years, and these mechs would serve in the Jihad on both sides. The Hermes is armed with two Hellion 5 medium lasers, which are split between the right arm and the center torso and tied to an Alexis Photon target acquisition system. The Alexis improves accuracy by painting the target with a low intensity targeting laser before firing. If the system fails to acquire a target lock on a sufficiently high density target, such as a tank for example, the order to fire is held in suspension for 2 seconds. If the target lock hasn't been reacquired by then, the fire order is cancelled. While the heat buildup from charging the laser still has to be dissipated, the system decreases the wear and tear of the firing emitters, greatly saving on maintenance. 
Unfortunately, the means to produce and repair the Alexis died with the Starling, and by the end of the Succession Wars, no Hermes outside of the Com Gods had a working one of these. One Olympian Flamer is mounted in the left arm, allowing the Hermes to start fires to cover an escape or deter anti mech infantry, although it is an older design using a napalm based fuel mix instead of directly tapping the fusion engine's plasma field. The napalm gel is forced alongside pressure hoses towards the nozzle, where it is mixed with small amounts of phosphorus suspended in water. When the phosphorus mixes with the air, it ignites. Heat management is provided by the standard number of 10 heatsinks mounted in a GM270 engine. In spite of using an endosteel chassis, this massive engine takes up nearly half of the Hermes mass, and is responsible for its tremendous cruising speed of 97 km an hour, and both the anemic weapon payload and 5 tons of armor. Fortunately, the replacement of standard armor with ferrofibrous shortly after the mech's introduction did improve its survivability. A couple of notable mech warriors associated with this mech include Lieutenant Alex Upland. He serves on the staff of Colonel Tommaso Kinchuhara, commander of the first Regulan Hussars. His Hermes can often be found near Kinchuhara's Orion on the battlefield ready to sprint off to deliver a critical message or scout a distant location. Although it is rare to find a mech warrior serving as an aide on the battlefield and off the battlefield, Lieutenant Upland serves this role both in and out of his mech. He is an adept mech warrior despite his near non-combatant status, with only three mech kills to his credit. Peter Grimes Subaltern Grimes commands the recon lance of the Concordat Commandos in the Torian Concordat. He pilots the only known Hermes known to exist in the periphery, leading a lance made up of his Hermes, two spiders, and a locust. This very fast lance is adept at scouting terrain across the Commandos entire axis of advance, despite its size because of their phenomenal speed. Grimes, however, would like to trade his Hermes for a more conventional spider. The novelty of the Hermes in the periphery means that every bandit they encounter tries to engage him just to be that one mech warrior who destroyed that funny looking thing. A few variants of this thing include, and not all the pictures are representative. The HRE 1A. This one is the downgraded refit of the 1S Hermes introduced in 2856. The main changes that have taken place are the removal of the ferrofibrous armor and the substitution of the standard internal structure for an endosteel structure. Due to the changes, the armor was reduced by half, but otherwise there are no changes in either speed or weaponry. The Alexis targeting system was also replaced by a Wasat aggressor. The HRE 1B. This is pretty much the same as the 1A, with the only difference being that the flamer was removed and replaced with another medium laser. The HRE 1SB. This so called Royal Hermes was introduced in 2740, has an upgraded weapon suit with four medium lasers and another small laser in addition to the flamer. It also mounts a Beagle Active Probe and a Mask System. Room for these improvements was made by switching to an XL engine. As usual with Royal Mechs, it uses double heatsinks. The HRE 3S. This one is the first of several upgraded variants of the Hermes, which were modified for use in electronic warfare. Produced by Irayan in 3047, this one includes the endosteel structure and ferrofibrous armor of the original, while dropping the flamer and decreasing the armor by half a ton. These modifications free up enough space for an upgraded electronic suite, which includes the original Alexis system made it to a Beagle Active Probe, giving it advanced detection capability. In addition, the mask system allows a burst of speeds of up to 194 kph. The HRE 3S1. 
This is the second of the electronic warfare variants and first saw use in 3049. It has identical modifications to the 3S, but instead of the Beagle Active Probe, it has a Guardian ECM suite. The HRE 3S2. This is the most rare of the electronic warfare variants. Introduced alongside the 3S1, it is almost identical, except that one of the medium lasers was sacrificed to free up weight for a TAG laser designator, allowing the mech to act as a spotter for Arrow 4 artillery. The HRE 4S. This one was introduced in 3057, and it is based on the 3S1 variant. It does carry over the mask and the chassis from that model, but has a complete upgrade of the weapons and engine. The original engine was replaced with an extra light engine, and the armor protection was upgraded to 5.5 tons. The weapons were also replaced by three medium pulse lasers, giving this particular Hermes an unprecedented amount of firepower in its long history. The HER-4K this one was prepared in 3058 as an export to the Draconis Combine. It removes the lasers of the 4S and replaces them with six ER medium lasers. A C3 slave unit is also added to integrate into the Combine C3 network. A bit of armor is removed in order to make room for all this equipment and another ER small laser. The HER-4M this one was introduced in 3060 for use within the Free Worlds League and by their Word of Black allies. It removes one medium and small laser to upgrade the C3 unit to an improved C3 computer. The HER4WB. This one was an exclusive variant for the Blakist starting in 3068. It swaps out the ferrofibrous armor for stealth armor resulting in a mech that is more difficult to target at a cost of overall protection. And all of this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Hermes Light Battle Mech for today. I also apologize for the quality of my voice, as my throat simply didn't want to work today. The Hermes, nevertheless, is a very speedy boy, which unfortunately doesn't pack much of a punch even for a light mech. You should also not confuse this one with the so-called Hermes 2, which while is the successor to this one, is also a separate battle mech, which I might also cover someday. Is the Hermes among your favorite battle mechs? What do you like or dislike most about it? As always, I welcome all your opinions and your stories about it, if you either used it or fought against it in your games. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end and I wish you all a great and healthy day. This is GDN signing off.